sexuality educator. In the last video, which was a while ago, we talked about HPV. We talked about what it is, the different strains, which ones are sexually transmitted, and which ones can lead to serious health problems like cervical cancer. This week, I want to address some questions that came up in a recent discussion that I was having with some folks online. Basically, some of the questions that came up were, why do some folks in the medical community ride so hard for these vaccines like Gardasil and Cervarex? And if they're so concerned with people's health and preventing cervical cancer, then why don't they just come up with a cure instead of a vaccine? And is this all some sort of you know, shady ploy by, pharmaceut by pharmaceutical companies to sell more drugs? I think it's important for people to ask questions and be curious about things like taking medications or you know doing anything that can uh, affect their health. I will try to answer these questions to the best of my ability and I'm going to use my values, facts, myths framework and uh, I've done a video on that. You can check that out by the description box. Something that I often say is own your values, state the facts, avoid myths. So I am going to try and do all of those things as I answer these questions. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you that uh, I am a doctor, but I am not that kind of a doctor. I am not a physician. I am not a pharmacologist. So if you are making decisions about what type of medical treatment is right for you or right for your kids, then I strongly suggest talking to a physician or, you know, a medical doctor in addition to, you know, watching videos on YouTube. I'm going to kick it off by talking about values because my personal values definitely come into play when I am making decisions about getting vaccinated or having my child vaccinated and I want to be really transparent about what my beliefs are here. I feel a responsibility to take care of my own health and to take care of my family's health and beyond that I feel a responsibility towards uh, my community and community health as well. I do have faith in the evidence that scientific and medical communities have offered in terms of vaccines and the role that they play, uh, particularly in mass immunity or uh, sometimes called herd immunity. These values are part of the reason that I personally choose to get vaccinated and I choose to have my child vaccinated. What I'm going to do is hit you up with some facts about vaccines in general and a few about the HPV vaccine specifically so that if you are trying to make a decision, uh, you can have a little bit of information when you are making those choices. So as I mentioned, one of the questions that came up was, why do doctors recommend a vaccine for HPV? You know, why not an out and out cure? The main reason that doctors recommend a vaccine as opposed to a cure for HPV or human papillomavirus is because it's a virus. Viruses are microorganisms. They are these super teeny little things that work by sneaking into our human cells and taking over the controls, kind of like little hijackers. You may already know that human cells divide and replicate. Viruses work by incorporating their DNA into the cell's DNA so that when the cell replicates, it also replicates the virus. Fortunately, our bodies have this awesome thing called the immune system, and the immune system works in all sorts of ways which are dope and fascinating, uh, but I don't really have the time or the expertise to explain it in detail. But basically, when our immune system uh, detects a viral infection, it releases antibodies to fight that infection. As I discussed last week, oftentimes people are infected with HPV and their immune system totally kicks its ass and gets rid of it all on its own. As great as the immune system is, it does need some time to ramp up its attack and kill a new virus. And in some cases, by the time the immune system kicks in, the virus is already so widespread that the immune system can't kill all the infected cells without also damaging our bodies. And this is when we see consequences that are serious or fatal, like when HPV leads to cervical cancer. If the immune system has encountered a virus before, it will have these memory cells, they're called B cells, just sort of floating around that recognize the virus. And if the virus returns, the B cells will bind the virus and very quickly start churning out antibodies to kill that virus. 
A vaccine sort of pre-infects the body and helps the immune system to recognize a virus quickly. That way, if something like HPV gets into our cells, our immune system goes, hey, wait, I know you, you're not supposed to be in here, and quickly starts doing its virus fighting thing. Those are some basic facts about vaccines and how they work. Now I'd like to address a few myths around HPV and vaccines. Some folks assume that because we can treat certain sexually transmitted infections with antibiotics that we should also be able to cure HPV with antibiotics. As we just talked about, HPV is a viral infection. Viral infections are different from bacterial infections like chlamydia or gonorrhea. So unlike viruses, when bacteria get into our body, they just kind of float around and stay distinct from our human cells. So that makes it much easier for medications like antibiotics to find and target bacterial infections specifically. Because viruses actually get inside of our cells and become part of our cell's DNA, finding and eradicating those types of infections is far more difficult and it requires a completely different approach, which is why treating something like HPV is very different than treating something like chlamydia or gonorrhea. Some people think that there's a risk of contracting HPV from the vaccines. However, HPV vaccines don't contain any live virus. They just have surface proteins that help the immune system recognize HPV if it enters the body. Finally, I think that certain criticisms about the pharmaceutical industry are valid. However, when it comes to the lack of a cure for HPV, I do not believe that this is evidence of a conspiracy on the part of the ph pharmaceutical industry. It is evidence of the fact that viruses are very complex and that bodies are very complex. It's just a problem that we haven't come up with a solution for yet. That is all. If you have made it to the end of this video, thank you for sticking with me through this little biology lesson. Uh, I also want to give a big, big thank you to Dr. Jeff Eisen, who uh, is a doctor doctor. He's a physician. He is also my brother-in-law, and he consulted with me on this video to make sure that all of the medical and scientific information was accurate for y'all. So thank you so much, Jeff. I always like to hear from folks, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I know that issues around vaccines can be a little bit controversial, so I'm just going to ask that if you are making a comment, you know, you're welcome to disagree, but please be respectful. Uh, like, share, subscribe. If you like the video, if you like the channel, all of that stuff. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye. I'm going to try and answer some of those in this video to the best of my ability. And I'm going to use my values, facts, myths, 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 myths. Why can't I say this word? Myths. It's hard. It's really hard. Okay.